let's discuss a very important topic which is damage control surgery before we enter the discussion of damage control surgery i would like to discuss with you the traumatic coagulopathy so what exactly happens in traumatic coagulopathy so imagine there is a trauma following which we have tissue damage and hemorrhage so we have tissue damage and hemorrhage and as a result of which what is going to happen patient is going to have shock and what is shock it is a state of hypoperfusion so there is hypoperfusion now what this is going to do is going to lead to systemic endothelial pathy so now what exactly happens in this systemic endotheliopathy so let's try to understand there will be glycocalyx shedding there will be sympatho adrenal activation there will be endogenous heparinization along with it the most important thing that is going to definitely happen is inflammation platelet activation and reduce clotting factor activity Now because of all this, and aided with resuscitation associated what will be the resuscitation associated factors, it will be hypothermia. Um, acidosis let's keep it simple as acidosis hypothermia acidosis coagulation factor dilution and over here you can also add the trauma associated So what will be the trauma associated factor that will be coagulation factor loss coagulation factor consumption it will lead to hyper lysis now this entire chain of events is eventually causing dramatic coagulopathy. So the important thing over here is that there is this lethal triad that we discussed in the resuscitation associated factor. So let's discuss it again over here. What is the lethal triad? This lethal triad is consisting of acidosis, right? Now, because of this acidosis, there is decreased function of coagulation protease. Which is causing coagulopathy. And this is causing further hemorrhage. Now, the another point is the coagulation. So what is happening? The bleeding and 
if we give RBC resuscitation that means the patient is bleeding and we give blood products without control of bleeding there is going to be dilution of coagulation factors which is going to cause dilutional coagulopathy and the other part would be the hypothermia so this is your lethal triad right this is your lethal triad now what would be the hypothermia basically decreased blood supply to the muscle as a result of which it is going to be under perfused and this is unable to generate heat So let's take a moment and again revise what exactly we have talked about so far regarding traumatic coagulopathy. So in case of a trauma, there is going to be a tissue damage and hemorrhage. It is going to lead to shock. There is going to be hyperperfusion as a result of which there is going to be systemic endothelopathy which is going to be having a lot of components like inflammation, glycocalic shedding and reduced clotting factor activity. Now this along is going to have hyperfibrinolysis which is associated with trauma and resuscitation associated factors which is eventually going to lead to traumatic coagulopathy now this resuscitation associated factors are mainly the components of the lethal tri which is acidosis coagulation and hypothermia so what is exactly happening over here is because of acidosis, there is decreased function of coagulation protease, which is going to cause coagulopathy and which will eventually lead to hemorrhage. Now, coagulation, now imagine the patient is bleeding, we give blood products, what is going to happen? It is going to dilute the coagulation factors, eventually leading to dilution coagulopathy. And in case of hypothermia, since there is no blood supply reaching to the muscle, the muscles are going to be underperfused as a result of which it will not be able to generate heat. So, now what is this damage control surgery? Now, why does this damage control surgery come? The main idea of this surgery is to blunt the physiological response, right? So, the main target over here is to blunt physiological response to prolonged shock and hemorrhage. So when we discuss about this damage control surgery, the next question would automatically come to us. When should we do damage control surgery? So yes, there are a few criteria which would decide whether a damage control surgery needs to be done or not. So let's discuss those criteria. So these are the criteria in which we would be doing a damage control surgery and obviously the opposite we would be giving the early total care. So for over here for the list making, I'll be just making the list for the criteria of the damage control surgery. So let's understand the criteria for damage control surgery so your first criteria will be hypothermia now what will be the value of hypothermia less than 34 degrees celsius acidosis so what should be the ph value it should be less than 7.2 then serum lactate level so what should be the level of serum lactate? It should be more than 5 millimole per liter. Then obviously the triad coagulopathy needs to be included. Then the blood pressure. So what at what blood pressure value less than that you will be considering damage control surgery 
it's less than 70 mm of Hg. Then if there is transfusion which has approached to around more than 15 units, and if your injury severity score which has been discussed in the module of trauma scores is more than 36. So these are the criteria for damage control surgery. And now what are the stages of damage control surgery? So you have stage 1. What is stage 1? Stage 1 is the patient selection. Stage 2 is the operative control of hemorrhage and contamination. Now stage 3 is your ICU resuscitation. Stage 4 is your definitive surgery. And stage 5 is your abdominal closure. Now, ATLS has also mentioned phases of DCS. Now, you need to be careful in your exam whether you have been asked stage or phase. The basic concept remains the same, but however, there is some difference in the phases grading. So, over your phase 1 is your phase of abbreviated laparotomy phase 2 is phase of ICU resuscitation and phase 3 is your definitive surgery now with damage control surgery it has there has come a concept of damage control resuscitation so the damage control resuscitation it has the following components number one we need to anticipate and treat traumatic coagulopathy stage two permissive hypotension until hemorrhage control we do not want to increase the pressure of the patient when the patient is bleeding as a result of which what is going to happen is that patient is going to bleed even more so permissive hypotension until hemorrhage control then three we need to limit the crystalloid and the colloid infusion in order to avoid the dilutional coagulopathy. Limit crystalloid and colloid infusion to avoid dilutional coagulopathy. Then we need to do damage control surgery. Damage control surgery to control hemorrhage and preserve physiology. The basic aim of DCS. To control hemorrhage to preserve physiology. So let's take a look at the important uh, points over here we discussed uh, regarding the traumatic coagulopathy so the damage control surgery the basic idea is to blunt the physiological response then the criteria you need to remember the values as they might be asked as simple straightforward mcqs Hypothermia less than 34, acidosis less than 7.2, serum lactate more than 5, coagulopathy, blood pressure less than 70, transfusion approaching more than 15 units, injury severity score more than 36. Now you have some stages of DCS. Stage 1 is patient selection. Stage 2 
is operative control of hemorrhage and contamination. Stage 3 is ICU resuscitation. Stage 4, definitive surgery. Stage 5, abdominal closure. Now, at some books, they have mentioned the phases. So, the concept is same, but then they have only three phases, where one is the abbreviated laparotomy, phase 2 is the ICU resuscitation, phase 3 is the definitive surgery. Now, the damage control resuscitation, so you need to anticipate and treat traumatic coagulopathy, permissive hypertension until hemorrhage control, we need to limit the crystalloid and colloid infusion to avoid dilution and coagulopathy and damage control surgery to control hemorrhage and to preserve physiology.